Welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to be making herbal infused syrup. Now I say syrup loosely because it's actually honey but for the most part these are called syrups. I'm going to be making two simple ones for you guys today but there are so many herbs, endless herbs and flowers that you could actually make syrup with so definitely look into it. The first thing we're going to do today is of course do a little cleanse with some palo santo. Just gonna set the intention for positivity and medicinal healing. Now, one thing that I wanna make clear is I am definitely not a doctor, but I do love to play around with my herbs and it is part of my job. If you think you might have a problem with any of these herbs, definitely don't blame it on me. <laughs> Figure it out yourself, patch test or take a little dose, but for the most part, you're probably gonna be fine. Things you're gonna be needing are as follows. You're gonna need one, two, or three completely sterilized mason jars. I don't know how many ounces or quarts these are. I'm not really sure, but these are smaller than the ones I usually use, which are half gallon. You're gonna need some type of spoon for the honey. Maybe you have a specific spoon for the honey because it's gonna get very sticky along with your herb or flower. Now the two honeys I'm gonna be making for you today are lemon balm and lavender. I have the giant one pound bag of lavender only because I use this for work, but I have my lemon balm in just a small little quart here. You don't need that much, surprisingly, if you're making it to taste or if you're making it heavily medicinal. Now, if you're doing something like sage syrup, it's very overwhelming, so you're only gonna put a few leaves of sage and then tons and tons of honey. But if you're doing something for taste, like the lavender, you're only gonna need a few spoonfuls of this and really not that much herb. I absolutely love lavender syrup for its medicinal values for migraines and depression and headaches as well as tension, depression and mental clarity. I just think this syrup is so sweet and delicious and to mix into your tea or just to take you know daily one little spoonful but it just has so many benefits that i've definitely seen in my day-to-day -day life that make me want to continue using it we normally know lavender syrup to be or lavender in general for anxiety and depression it has many other benefits including anti-inflammatory benefits which is amazing for just the the gastric area here and digestion as well as bloating, but I really, really like it in placement for CBD, which sounds crazy because I'm addicted to my CBD, but this is just a natural alternative that kind of grounds you with the taste of the natural herb and oils coming out of here, but it's subtle enough that it's not gonna be stuck in your mouth all day. Now, lemon balm is an antiviral, along with very beneficial for insomnia, as well as digestion again. Lemon balm is known in tincture form to be very beneficial with anxiety, so these two are my anxiety syrups, I guess you could say. Um, I wouldn't say one works better than the other. I think it's particular on taste, um, but you do know that a lot of people do take lemon balm in tea form or tincture or syrup, whatever the case may be, for anxiety. This is a known thing. Another syrup that I'm not making today but I absolutely love is rosemary syrup. Not only is it good for things like colds and cough, but it promotes better circulation as well as known as the love syrup. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, if you could get local honey, this is going to be much better for you. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you're somebody with chronic allergies, they say that the local honey, since it's been around the environment that you're used to, actually helps with the allergies because it has little bits of that pollen and allergen in it. So it's going to get you kind of immune to the allergy. This is grade A raw honey. This is pure, unpasteurized, unfiltered. As I brought up before, these are amazing to put in your tea. If you're a tea lover, I would recommend going on mountainroseherbs.com and finding natural root and herb and flower that you can infuse your own tea. This one is a new one that I'm trying out. It's marshmallow root and marshmallow root is pretty amazing. It's a detox as well as it's amazing for the throat and the stomach. So if you're anything like me, I do have stomach issues and it mainly started for me because of my anxiety. Before I went on medication and did all my 
you know, herbal medicines, I would say that my anxiety completely shredded my gut because that's where I would carry my worry was my stomach and my chest. It just completely soothes the area, especially I like to do a cold elixir as well as a hot elixir. And I'm gonna be teaching you guys at the end of the video how to incorporate your honey as well as make kind of like a elixir tincture tea out of marshmallow root. I have specifically lit blue candles for the intention of internal healing, love, positivity, joy, and flow. Lemon balm has such a nice natural tea scent. It's like the typical lemony herb. Of course I'm gonna spill that everywhere. I'm putting just over two little spoonfuls of the lemon balm, and then we're gonna switch over to our lavender bud. Now, over time, these herbs are gonna get pretty potent and it's completely up to you whether or not you want to strain it or not. Eventually, it will turn kind of gunky and black if you don't want to strain it, but if you do strain it, it's just gonna stay at the consistency that you have harvested it at. So the more potent it gets, when you take out those herbs, you're stopping it from increasing the oil production and therefore tasting more intense or bitter. And as simple as that, we're going to just fill the jar completely to the top with honey. Something you may be wondering is how exactly we're gonna keep the honey completely liquid. And the quick answer for you is we're gonna keep this by the sunlight. I want you to keep this honey on your windowsill and allow it to continually infuse by the sun and nothing else for the next two to three weeks. You're gonna strain it after that and keep it in a cool, dark place. I wanted to add something quickly that I hadn't mentioned before because it's very important and vital through this process. You're gonna wanna use dried herbs. You can dry them yourself or get them pre-dried. Now, we're gonna wanna make sure they dry for a while because this cannot have any water content at all. The reason being, honey is very hard to create a negative interaction with like bacteria and everything just because of the way that it ages, if it ages at all. Um, but we're going to be trying to avoid any molds or toxins that could get inside. I want you to shake your honey up and down once or twice a day just to finalize the coverage of the herbs. The final thing we're gonna be doing today is I'm just gonna show you a little tour of some of the herbs and flowers I'm growing that I can infuse with honey. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I know it was very quick and simple, but since a lot of you usually like my recipes or herbal infused items, I figured this would be a perfect thing to film. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.